Hey, Christy. Hey, Nicole. Happy Thursday. <laughs> happy Thursday. <laughs> Were you confused about what to say? Yeah. No, <laughs> happy April. It's finally April. It's finally April. And guess what to our audience? It's going to snow tomorrow? <laughs> well, no. Well, Saturday it's going to snow. Saturday. But this is our 26th episode, and I brought it up to Nicole earlier, and she didn't realize what significance that had. It means, or it means, it means that we have been doing this for a solid six months. I was, like, trying to rack my brain and think about, like, 26. What's the significance of 26? We're not 26 years old. <laughs> We didn't meet when we were 26. <laughs> Happy six-month anniversary. So you know what that means. We have another six months to get ready for our big one-year one year anniversary celebration. Is is there, well, is what's one year like paper? And clocks. I, oh, is so it, <laughs> I was actually already thinking what type of clock I was going to get you. <laughs> is there a six-month? Novelty item or no? <laughs> nah, I think we should just wait till the one year, okay. <laughs> mainly so I could get you an even better clock. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I am lacking clocks in my life. <laughs> um, in terms of updates this week, I don't even think that I have any updates no. just because I feel like I'm so boring <laughs> these but days. I would agree with myself as well. I was trying to like rack my brain, even when you're like, so what's up when we were talking earlier? I was like, well, I started using Jergen self care. <laughs> I was thinking, like, I have to be the lamest person in the world. That that's like my like big takeaway from the week. Um, can we talk about that? My big takeaway is that I went to Walmart this morning to get <laughs> razors and found extra, I guess, promotional items I could use that are Bubba cups. <laughs> and I was excited about that. That was my update. <laughs> I mean, a trip to Walmart is out of the ordinary, so, you know. <laughs> Nicole couldn't understand why I went to Walmart. I had to explain to her it's because Target doesn't open till 8, so I had to go some ways I could go before work. I have done early morning. There's a Walmart right by my school, and I have done early morning trips walmart so i understand and it is kind of like nice and peaceful actually i'm generally Mm -hmm. not a walmart person but early in the morning no one's there so i'm cool with it that's how i feel too like Mm -hmm. i would never go to walmart on a weekend i think that kevin has asked me multiple times when i sit over my dead body or (laughs) just no and um the mornings are really fine it's just like i like going to like home depot and lowe's and stuff in the mornings too because you know those places open at like 6 a.m true and everybody is willing to help you then. Like, they'll help you find everything. It's wonderful. I actually like going to those places just because I feel like even if I'm not going to do a project or going to complete a project <laughs> or even, like, going to be able to do anything with the materials I get, I feel a sense of accomplishment and, like, Why are you empowerment. buying so many materials? <laughs> well, I don't. But, like, if I'm just going to buy, like, a plant or something... <laughs> I feel like a sense of empowerment as a woman that I am in the Home Depot and I am perhaps looking around, even though it's embarrassing because so probably the last time I was at the Home Depot was when I was redoing my bathroom and I went with my parents. I think it was like a Friday night. I was with my parents at the Home Depot like after dinner. It was a low point. Um, and I remember picking out, trying to like get ideas for tiles for my bathroom and I like almost <laughs> cried in the middle of the Home Depot because I was so overwhelmed by the choices. <laughs> that goes I, to show you that I probably shouldn't do home projects. So my issue is that because I like to go there in the mornings and because there are so many choices and things to think about and normally when the coffee hasn't fully <laughs> set in, I'll end up being late to work because I get so overwhelmed <laughs> at these places and I try and go there early just because there's more help. And for a while, I'm pretty sure that they, like, recognized me at the Home Depot (laughs) because I just kept coming in, like, every day. Well, you go in for, like, a light switch, like, simple enough. Like, there are, there can't be that many choices. But there are. There's, like, 300 options for light switches. And then you, like, kind of overthink, like, well, I just wanted to do the standard. But do I want to do this Uh fancy one? Do I want to go with the vertical, the horizontal? There's too many choices. Also, um... When it comes to like light fixtures, that's another tough oh, one. Yeah. I oh, I just like can't stop thinking about light fixtures when I'm trying to decide on one. That's how come I don't have any lighting in here, and I'm still dealing with the light lamp in tiny studio. <laughs> I was just gonna say, didn't you just talk about how you needed a new light fixture? Well, I've 
Okay, no joke. I've looked like probably two or three times and I just couldn't make a decision. So I still have like a lamp. Have you tried Lowe's? I do. Um, I do go to Lowe's because a lot of times they have different options or more extensive like I don't know, like Home Depot is good for like the nitty gritty type of stuff. And Lowe's well, it is wasn't good. Lowe's designed for like women to be like the alternative for women. Oh, was it? I think so. Yeah. Oh. I think I learned that at some point in business school. <laughs> oh, I had no idea about that. It's like the more feminine of the two. Well, yeah, I had no idea. But, but it makes sense. Yeah, no, it definitely does. But so my issue, too, is that Target, Home Depot, and then Hobby Lobby are all in the same, like, plaza oh. where you can walk between them. So if I go for, like, the trifecta, you're not going to see me for, like, a good half day. <laughs> we don't have Hobby Lobbies in Baltimore or anywhere around here, I don't think. Um, Yeah, I don't even know. Probably like Northern Virginia would probably be the closest one, I would imagine. Yeah, not going there. <laughs> well, I, I have to always go through there. Um, but alas, this podcast is not about any of these places because no, they we're are kind of like, yeah, get veering on the business mm-hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> for now. Yeah, this podcast um, is actually about, so I guess, unless you've been living under a rock. It's in memory, right? It's yeah, in memoriam. <laughs> it is, yeah. Re- this Don't is more, be sad, though. <laughs> this is more of a rest in peace episode. Um, so everybody has probably heard by now that Choice R Us is going out of business, which prompted me to think about all the other things that used to exist and no longer exist anymore. And so... We compiled, each one of us, a very scattered amount of notes. <laughs> <laughs> Things we will not be able to experience with our children or grandchildren. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm actually really upset about Toys R Us going out of business. Not because of Toys R Us, because of Babies R Us. Because Oh, I was about that came to mind. Does Babies R Us go out too? Um, yeah. And so here's the issue. Oh. We don't have a bye-bye baby or anything in Richmond. So when I have... What is a bye-bye baby? It's like a Babies R Us, but bye-bye baby owned by Bed Bath & Beyond. Oh, okay. Wow. That's a lot of bees. I know. (laughs) I guess that was a lot of bees. Um, But what I'm confused about is one day when baby number two potentially comes into the world with me, if... Where are you going to go? No, like, seriously, where am I going to go? Like... If they don't have it on Prime now, because not everything is on Prime now, like, where am I going to go? And I and Target selection isn't that extensive. Like, they don't have everything there. You're following my entire train of thought. My, I was going to say, what about Amazon? Then I was going to say, can't you just go to Target? <laughs> Maybe you should go to Walmart. They probably no, have more. I've been to their baby section, too. Like, there are certain things that you could only get at, like, the designated baby store or wait five days in the mail for. And I'm trying to think yeah. of, like, specific examples. Okay, I have one. The diaper pail liners for the diaper pail in Madeline's room. I actually went to multiple stores looking for it, came home in a sweat, almost wanted to cry <laughs> because I wasted all this time trying to find essentially garbage bags. I was going to say, can't you just use the garbage bag? And then Kevin just told me to order them on Amazon. But it take it took like three days to get there because, of course, there was some sort of delay with the shipping. So what did you do in the meantime? Um, didn't put the diapers in that trash can. <laughs> Do you think our grandparents had these luxuries? <laughs> well, it actually was Kevin's fault why I even had this issue because he didn't understand how it worked and I came home and it's more of like um a tunnel of like plastic. This way it saves plastic because then you could just cut it when you need to throw it out. So say you have like a really messy diaper, you throw it in there and then you it creates like a little bag or you could create a bigger bag, right? Well, okay. Kevin got confused about how to refill it or how to like change it. And so I came and there was all this like plastic tunnel tubing all over <laughs> Madeline's room. So we wasted most of it, which is why I even needed the new diaper bags to begin with. Maybe next time you should just move to cloth diapers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Wait till you have a child. I'm going to get you only cloth diapers. <laughs> I don't even know how cloth diapers. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, I know how they work, but They're I cloth. think now, like, you can send away a service and we'll pick them up. Yeah, but you still have, like, shit stained cloth. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, 
again, everything is gross in this situation for me. So. And also, the, like, pampers are just as easy. Like, they're just easy to throw away. Like, I believe you. <laughs> Wait, so I wonder if there's a Bye Bye Baby up here. There are. Yeah. Oh, there are. Okay. Mm, yeah. So don't worry. So no more babies are us. No. And then also, um, do you remember, well, other things when I was thinking about Toys R Us, um, I was thinking about other places I used to go as a kid. And when we go to the mall, we'd go to KB Toys. I'd have to do my, oh, yeah. my, mm-hmm. I still remember the layout of KB Toys because you'd have like the Barbie aisle. You'd have like. And weren't there like like moving pigs in the middle yeah, kind yeah. of like those electronic things. And yeah. then you'd have like the boy aisle, the girl aisle. Then you'd have the arts and craft aisle. Then you'd have, well, I don't even know what that last aisle was. It was normally four solid aisles. No, oh, I, I was not as familiar with KB <laughs> Toys as you are. I just remember the pig. Um, Wasn't um, Kids R Us a thing? Yeah, that's where I got a lot of my attire between the ages of like three and six. That went out way before this whole Toys R Us, Babies R Us thing, I think. Yeah, apparently that was like 2003. Oh, God. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. And that's not as hard because you can find kids' clothes a lot of different places. It's just when I need my diaper pail liners, there's only so many places that sell them. I guess I know what I'm getting you for your birthday. (laughs) Not that. (laughs) Give me alcohol to deal with the diaper (laughs) pail liner issue. (laughs) Um, And then I have here, well, FAO Schwartz went out of business, which was a really sad day. That is on my list because I, that was always like, uh, traditional for us when we went to New York as kids. Mm-hmm. We'd always go to FAO Schwartz. I remember my sister got her first Furby there, or her only Furby there, I guess. <laughs> I <was gonna> say, <laughs> how many Furbies did your sister get? <laughs> Just one. But I remember the reason I remember her getting the Furby is because, like, when we went to the New York one, at, at one point they put a FAO Schwartz in our mall at home, but obviously it wasn't like as exciting as oh, New York. Oh, we had Schwartz. one in our mall too. Well, not our mall. It's because I lived in Staten Island and we went to Jersey a lot for the mall. So there was one in the Menlo Park Mall yeah. in New Jersey. There was one in the Towson Town Center. It wasn't as exciting, but when we went to New York, it was like really exciting. And the mm-hmm. whole, I remember oh, when and Barbie World downstairs, yeah, and when um, the Furbies came out, it was just like a whole wall, like a huge wall of like Furbies. Like people went crazy for these Furbies. It's actually really sad that all these places are going out of business because I just feel like it's not going to be fun for Madeline to just like look on a computer and pick a toy. Like the whole fun was like going through and seeing in person all the toys that your parents wouldn't buy you. Yeah, I mean, she's and not then- going to have toys. She's just- gonna have her ipad and she's gonna go on youtube videos and that those will be her toys yeah i mean especially since when i drove in today i ran over her sidewalk chalk so <laughs> there goes a toy <laughs> yeah do i mean what's like a toy store that's around now toys R Us was the last one yeah. and then um there was i remember when i was a little noodle kadoodle we had that in our mall those went out of business i don't remember that yeah, and then there was Zany Brainy, I remember, too. That was, like, educational, right? Yeah, but still toys. Yeah. And I, yeah, remember, yeah. I liked going into Zany Brainy because you could, like, play with the toys in there. Yeah. And um, they had that. Do you remember you had, like, the little door that, like, the kids could walk through and then, like, okay, the so big door? I feel like at one point at my mall, it was called the Imaginarium. Yes, yes. I and think it turned it into Zany Brainy. Okay, yeah. One, I think it changed from, like, one to the other, but yeah. Okay. Because I do remember the little door. I thought that was really cool. It's silly. Like, it's the same door. You're just going right. through the smaller door. But as a kid, I thought that was really cool. <laughs> Me too. And now it's, like, probably, like, some, like, hair salon with just a random small door. Yeah. <laughs> a doggy door. Yes. Um, and then I also saw, when doing research, I completely forgot about Discovery Zone, but they're out of business, too, apparently. And I guess that's more like a Chuck E. Cheese. Discovery Zone. It was, like, the DZ. <laughs> There were commercials. I know. And I can't, like, think in my head what it was. It was, like, a arcade? All I think of is Ball Pit when I think of there. Oh. Do you remember the ESPN Zone in Baltimore? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's and they, ha- they had one in Disney, too. Oh, yeah. I guess it was, like, a chain. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I actually was recently having a conversation with someone. We were talking about bar and bat mitzvahs. Uh-huh. And then that got on the topic of, like, the non like Jewish equivalent would be like a sweet sixteen, like a big party for right, yeah. birthday. So I was talking about how either mine or someone's sweet sixteen, like I went to, we went to the 